Earlier this year, as we were approaching the time of Lent, I was trying to decide exactly what, how my Lenten observances would go, what would be my Lenten disciplines, those sorts of questions. And I decided that I would incorporate fasting as a part of that. In our tradition, there are two days of the Christian calendar that we are strongly encouraged to fast. Those are Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Uh, others we're encouraged are the Fridays of Lent and the Fridays throughout the year. But those are the two that are the greatest focus. So I decided that I was going to fast on those days. Now I must confess to you that that I have a checkered history with fasting. Um, and that uh, there have been times in the past when I have rationalized not fasting uh, um, for very good reasons. Quite frankly, I blamed it on you. <laughs> because I didn't think you would like me very much if I were not eating. Uh, it just has that effect on me. And part of the discipline I know is how do you control that and deal with it. But nevertheless, I decided I would do it this year. So I did. And it was one of those situations where from sunrise to sunset, I, I did not eat except drinking water. And, and it was all OK. I, it, I had no great revelations because of it. Uh, no mon monumental things came to mind. Uh, but it, I, I did it. So as Lent drew to a close, I began to think, you know, there's, there's more to this fasting thing than, than really what I did. And fasting is not just about what we do, it's, about, it's, it's prevalent in other faith traditions. And I began to wonder just what that sort of stuff meant. So I decided I was going to incorporate it into my life, at least for a while. So I have. I've not lost any friends for that reason. There may be others, but uh, at least it's become a daily part of my life. I've adjusted my, my schedule as to how I eat. I, I've, I've backed off of eating certain things. Uh, I only eat a couple of, one real meal a day. It's just something that I felt I needed to do. Don't worry, I am monitoring it and taking care of myself. But I, as I began to do it, I really didn't have any goals or expectations beyond just, just the discipline of doing it, but something has happened. And that, for me, is, is what's important, and I, I want to share that with you this morning. I have come to understand something about myself through this whole process, and especially about hunger. Now, before I go any farther, let me acknowledge that there are people in our community and in our nation and in the world for whom fasting is not an option. They simply do not have food. And I'm not talking about that with this. This is a different matter that must be addressed. But as I've moved along with this, I've noticed about my hunger, that, that there are things that I, I had known long ago, but I've rediscovered. And one of them is that for much of my life, and especially recently, I eat on schedule, and I get hungry on schedule. Every morning at a certain time, I have to eat because it's that time and I'm hungry. And as it gets closer to midday, I get hungry at a certain time because I eat at a certain time. And then in the evening, late afternoon and evening, I do the same thing. I eat according to the time of the day. But I get hungry according to the time of the day too. Now what I've fallen into is this trap that I feel hungry so I've got to eat. But in reality, what I'm discovering about myself is this. I've really not been hungry for food all of those times. 
You see, one of the things that's happened with me with, with eating, and it's happened with me with other things too, is that I come to feel that I have this deep need for them, and that if I can only eat enough, or if I can only have enough companionship, or if I can only have whatever it is that is, is that need at this time, I will be satisfied. And I will be fulfilled. Does that happen with you? I'm curious. Are you, when you're trying to feed whatever, whatever hunger it is you have in your life, are you wanting to be satisfied? Are you wanting to be fulfilled? It happens to me, and I have to tell you, that whole thing of being satisfied is very seductive. It's very seductive. Because I get caught up in the idea that it is the reality with which I live. And if I can only do this, if I can only eat enough, everything is going to be great and wonderful. But it's not. And no matter how much I can eat, no matter how much I can do whatever it is I think I need at the time, it is not fulfilling. Now that's not to say that there's not a valid role for hunger in our lives. I think it does tell us that, that we need something, whether it's food or, or something else more than that. And I, I think that's part of what Nicodemus was dealing with in today's reading from John. Here's Nicodemus. He's a, he's a Pharisee, and not only is he a Pharisee, he's the chief Pharisee. So Nicodemus has in his life anything and everything that he needs to be fulfilling. But yet, but yet he comes to Jesus under the cover of darkness. And he approaches him because I think he has a yearning in his life for something else. And so he engages Jesus. How do I have what you're selling? How can I be fulfilled? How can I get satisfaction with you? And Jesus begins to answer him. And it's a serious thing for Nicodemus because he doesn't stop with that. He stays in there with Jesus. And he says, well, if that's the case, then what about this? And, and how do we do this? Kind of like you and me when we really need to know something, when it's, it's very important to us, when we yearn for it. And so Jesus tells him all about this and all about what life with him means and and tries to answer his questions as best he can. Just as you and I listen for ours to be answered too. You see, I think you and I are somewhat akin to Nicodemus, or perhaps kin with him. And that is, I think that when I am looking to be fulfilled, the reality for me is that I use transient things. I, I latch on to things that go away to try to find satisfaction in my life. But what Nicodemus tells me in his story is that there's something much more satisfying and fulfilling. And I think ultimately, this is what you and I seek. We seek not just to have our bellies full, but our souls set afire and our hearts filled with the love of God. We seek somehow to draw closer to the one who created us and recreates us and gives us new life. This, I think, is what it means to be satisfied and fulfilled. You know, if you go ahead and read the next few verses, Nicodemus isn't there. But we read about him in two other places. 
is the Gospel of John. After this, he's with his Pharisee folks in the Sanhedrin. And he's appealing to them that because Jesus has been accused of a, of a crime, he should have a right to speak. He's advocating for Jesus in that setting. And you know the last place we see Nicodemus in the Gospel of John? He's with Joseph of Arimathea going to anoint the body of Jesus. Nicodemus got something that fed him that day. Something that went beyond those compulsions and addictions of our lives, those drives that we have to do things. He got it, and I think it's there for us. But I think here is the hard part. To have the connection with God that you and I seek, that which gives us fulfillment and satisfaction, takes one very difficult and disciplined thing in our lives. We have to clear away. We have to clear away the things that separate us from God. We have to fast in our own ways in order to open ourselves to our true needs and our true desires and to be there to be touched by the Creator. I'm not saying you need to give up what you're eating. I'm not saying you need to do whatever it is. I'm saying that we must open ourselves to God if we seek true fulfillment. So that's kind of what I've learned. There are a few other things that are really not important to you, but, but I hope that this can mean something for us all. For I think it is our stuff that stands in the way of our being closer to God and not God's stuff that stands in our way of God being closer.